Well, aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you're tuning in in the world, welcome to all those on podcast. Welcome to all those watching on live stream. Facebook. Today is February 10, excuse me, uh, May 10. Maybe it's May 9. And it is a Tuesday. And I'm honored to be connecting with you here today, coming live from Honolulu. As you can see, I'm outside. And today, we're going to be focusing on spiritual testing, what it is and how to pass it. And spiritual testing has many different layers, many different ways it presents itself to different people. So I'll be sharing with you some of those ways today. I'm sure that you can identify your ways probably a whole lot better than I can. But we all have our various forms of it today. For me, I'm having some physical spiritual purification. My energy body is not aligned to the blessings I have been receiving from Master Shah. So my frequency is not high enough. The blessings I'm getting from Master Shah are higher than my body. So my body is having difficulty adjusting. For me, it comes in the form of sinus and blowing my nose a lot. <clears throat> it acts like a heavy allergy, but it's just purification. So you will see me stopping to blow my nose a lot. And I apologize for the unpleasant sound. <coughs> but that's an example of spiritual testing and purification. <coughs> And so we'll have many opportunities today to further connect to all the different ways that it shows up for us. I have a feeling this will be a pretty popular subject matter since a lot of us uh, that are on the spiritual journey tend to be tested more than those all around us who have, quote, the ideal life. You know, they go to work, they come home, they get their paycheck every other Friday and they spend time at the bar with their friends and everything's just hunky-dory in some of their lives. But in our lives, we tend to go through quite a bit of struggle. Those that are watching are those that are on the spiritual path. Of those that are on the spiritual path, we tend to get our tail kicked quite a bit. So we're going to talk about that today and the what, why, and the how. So as you can see, I'm outside in beautiful Honolulu. <clears throat> Today is usually the day I'm at the center, but there's some reconstruction occurring there. They're realigning some of the rooms, so there's pounding and nails and drills. And So I thought it was best that I go down the street to the park and give you this beautiful view. Hopefully you can hear the birds around me. Maybe you can hear the surf in the background. You'll probably hear a helicopter or airplane flying over occasionally. Might not be all that uh, easy to hear sometimes. I'll try to minimize the blowing my nose as I go through my purification. So let me acknowledge all those that are joining us at this time. <coughs> Welcome Ned Nebedita. Welcome CJ. Welcome Jota. And welcome Kathleen Monahan. Aloha Kristen Rojas. Welcome Ruth Dunbar. Welcome Jennifer Smith and Robin Toth. Welcome Susan. Aloha Kate Nicole. Aloha to Candy. And welcome Angie Taylor. Welcome Ali Fess. Welcome Linda Jansen. And welcome Magdalena. Magdalena Mera. Welcome Richard Maul. Welcome Mary Tedisco and Tammy Hunter. Aloha Christopher. Welcome Kristen Strachan. And welcome Tracy Lagavion. La Loga Logiovane. Logiovane. <clears throat> if I missed your name, please forgive me. So at least you get the beautiful view behind me. It's a little too bright in front of me, which is why I have my sunglasses on. Otherwise, I'd be squinting and you wouldn't see my eyes. So better to at least see the sunglasses. 
and welcome Bragit. So spiritual testing is a big subject for all of us. So before we get into that, I'll ask you all to hit the share button. Let other people know about this. Most likely one of the friends that sees this pop on their page will go, hey, that sounds right down my alley. And then uh, we'll definitely do some, some blessings today to help us all pass our spiritual testing. Welcome to Johnny Mambodi as well. So let us start by connecting heart to heart, soul to soul. Placing our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position. We drop the left hand in front of the heart, center the right hand remains pointed towards heaven. <clears throat> Let us fully connect. They're all beings of light, beloved Mother Earth, beloved Father Heaven. All layers of all committees, serving the plan of the light side. We love you, we honor you, we appreciate you, and we invite you to be with us today to assist in the wisdom, the teachings, and in the blessings to help us to pass our spiritual testing. Please guide my wisdom, please guide the blessings to assist each and every one of us in whatever way is most needed. Dear the soul of our own heaven's teams, guides, angels, and saints, we love you all, honor you, and appreciate you, and we ask for your presence and your blessings as well. Please bless us to see clearly the way the spiritual tests come to us, the reasons why they come to us, and the highest wisdom that we can apply to pass our tests, both individually and collectively. To the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony transmitted to all souls in all universes. We love you, we honor you, appreciate you, respect you. We ask you to please be with us at this time to turn on in all souls and we invite all souls in all universes to chant with us at this time to offer our service for those that are new this is a blessing please make a request for those that wish to offer their service please join in as we chant lula lula li lula lula la li Lula, lula, li, lula, lula, li, lula, lula, li, lula. Wo I wo shin hurling, wo I trun ran lay, wang li rong her mu shur shang. Shang I ping on her she, Shang I ping on her she. I love my heart and soul, I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together, love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace and harmony ha 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 thank you thank you thank you <coughs> so for those that uh, joined after my explanation the reason why I am blowing my nose is because I'm going through a form of spiritual purification uh, spiritual testing and part of the testing is do I even do a live stream and I'm not feeling very good uh, in terms of the sinuses and blowing the nose every five minutes and whatnot. <clears throat> but the answer is, of course, you serve unconditionally. So we all have our forms of testing. Mine comes very often around Master Shah retreats. I think a lot of us do actually come around Master Shah retreat times if we are a student. And one of the reasons why, very simply, is because the frequencies are elevated. If we are a student, meaning one that has received a healer transmission, then we are um, connected to that um, channel, if you will, that is the recipient of the source frequencies because we're all out there serving through our healer transmissions. And so accordingly, we, uh, as a dedicated student, uh, will be uplifted, will be given opportunities to grow, will be given opportunities to um, awaken more. For those that are not students, they get testing in a different way. And so uh, 
let's start from the beginning. What is spiritual testing? I'm going to ask for an answer and I will share with you the wisdom that comes through. So this is the wisdom that I will share at this time on what is spiritual testing. How? My beloved ones, I am honored to share with you some deeper insights as to the nature of spiritual testing. All human beings are on a path. The path is to return to the One. In the return process, there is layers of spiritual debt that must be removed in order for you to return to the light, in order for you to be one with the light. Spiritual debt is the source of suffering. When one is in spiritual testing, it has a direct association with opportunities to clear blockages. The blockages for each individual are unique and as individual as the person themselves. Each of you has a Heavens team. This team has been assigned to you and it fluctuates the number of souls, those souls that stay with you. Some stay your entire life, but most do not. They come in, they leave, they come in, they leave. These souls are there to assist you at the appropriate times for your soul journey. Your Heavens team actually stays quite busy planning your next phase of growth. What you would call spiritual testing, they would call growth planning. The difference is the perspective. Testing to you feels painful. Growth planning to them feels very loving, joyful, and uh, one of the greatest services that they can offer to you and your soul and its journey. These kinds of blessings come to each and every human being. And it is the veil of ignorance that separates the human from seeing these growth blessings through the correct eyes. It is difficult, we understand, to take the information that is coming at you, be it uh, difficult, stressful, or otherwise in the current environment that you operate in. But regardless, the conditions that show themselves in your world are purposeful. Their purpose is always the same, to bring you to the highest layers of love possible. <clears throat> Those of you who have chosen to awaken to your highest spiritual calling <clears throat> will always be given the opportunity to do exactly that, awaken to your highest spiritual callings. Those of you who find yourself constantly being challenged through various emotions and or physical blockages, pain, various other forms of experiences, financial restrictions, and more. These are not necessarily brought upon you or to you just so that you can suffer. In fact, spiritual testing is most often simply uh, one or two very simple actions put into motion. It is almost entirely the reaction by the recipient that causes more or less of the desired end result. Those that move into a greater understanding, a greater awareness of how life presents itself to them with the recognition that there's always opportunity in each way life presents itself find themselves, instead of reacting, being in a place of awareness. It is the awareness that is the highest intention. It is the awareness 
that is what is the message to be offered and hope that is received here today. Because in the awareness that whatever comes to you is an aspect of the opportunity for growth, then the reaction to that opportunity can greatly enhance the end result. If the reaction is emotionally based, then the propensity for extending the suffering is also enhanced. If the reaction is one of awareness, which typically might include a smirk of laughter because of seeing it for what it is, moving into the practices that are intended with that awareness, such as forgiveness as appropriate or uh, more love as appropriate or whatever is most needed to dissolve that which has come into you with the opportunity, then one can move through whatever comes to them with great expediency. There is in the human experience something that is not necessarily in others, other souls' experiences, and that is the nature of time. The nature of time creates the nature of suffering. The nature of time causes one the opportunity to choose to react or to be aware. It is the nature of time that must be controlled and overcome. This is done through awareness. It is through reaction that causes the nature of time to be extended and operate as if it had any degree of reality. It is the nature of time in the human experience that allows the majority of humanity to believe that they are not in control of their outcomes. Whereas the one who chooses awareness instead of reaction also is aware that their reaction, be it positive or negative, actually shortens the nature of time, shortens the nature of the duration of the suffering, shortens the duration of the uh, clearing of the karma or what may have been surfaced to release and therefore expediates the process of the return to the one. Time, as you have discovered, is moving faster, very much so more recently. and this means that your reaction could create instant consequences, both positive and negative. If your reaction is positive, loving, forgiving, aware, and so forth, recognizing the nature of the opportunity that comes, then the passing of that suffering is actually very rapid and fast. It is the uh, also in reverse, when someone reacts inappropriately or in old patterns, the nature of time works against them in that something negative comes to them very quick. This is so because we are moving into a fourth density, we are moving into a frequency that is devoid of time. And as such, the being that moves more and more into the light will be one that stays in the light on a constant basis because that has been their choice. The being that stays with reacting in a negative way, therefore always being in a place of testing and always being in a place of uh, stuck in suffering, will also bring more of that to them. You must choose which one is most important for you moving forward. This is the wisdom that we wish to share at this time. Ha, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. So thank you to that wisdom, the soul of that wisdom. I didn't even find out who that was that was sharing, but uh,
It was very valuable, I think. So one of my teachers early on studying with Master Shah, her, she's, uh, she's one of the top teachers now. Her name is Master Marilyn. And she's an ordained nun, Catholic ordained nun. But she's also a master uh, in Master Shah's organization. Very, very uh, pure one at that. And she's taught that the only thing to say, regardless of the condition, is thank you. And she further expands on that and says the simple reason why is when we are in a place of gratitude, as difficult as it can be again and again and again can be difficult, but when we are in that place of gratitude, we have the opportunity to transform the blockage as quickly as possible. We have the opportunity to not get caught up in, the, um, in that message. As was stated in the previous wisdom, everything is an opportunity. And so when we say thank you, we instantly shift ourselves. We instantly allow ourselves to not be in a place of reaction. We set the stage to where our time is used very, very wisely. Because our time can be commandeered. Our time can be completely uh, taken control of by knee-jerk reactions uh, that do not have um, consciousness and awareness associated with them and granted it's a it's a process but if we remind ourselves that no matter how whatever it is comes at us that we set ourselves up to manage the time that occurs after that moment with the statement of thank you then we can pause we can take that moment and say okay now I need to figure out what I'm saying thank you about uh, this is obviously an opportunity. How do I address this from the highest and best place? Is there a necessity to bring love to this table? Is there a necessity to bring forgiveness to the table? What do I need to do to put my mind in the highest and best place possible so that I am not um, uh, making the use of this future time um, unusable and creating more suffering for myself? Suffering is when we are not aware. Suffering is when we stay out of a place of responsibility. Suffering is when we refuse to see that we are responsible for our world and we are co collectively responsible for the, the larger whole. By working on ourselves and by um, being self-responsible in this way, we then become happier people we are not so miserable. If we're not miserable, that means we don't yell at the husband, the wife, the kids, the co-workers. That means the energy we put into the food is better. That means that everything that we touch, regardless of what it is, is enhanced. And that serves all humanity in one of the biggest ways possible. Because how many times has somebody been miserable towards you and it impacted your day negatively? That's not something that is... Uh, uh, that impacts everything because if it impacted you negatively then you're frowning and, and, and creating it's a, it's, a, it's a ripple effect so whether you're positive or whether you're negative it's a ripple effect so our individual awakening is very relative to the whole so now that we know what is spiritual testing we go into the why why is there such a thing as spiritual testing the answer came through in the information in the, in the uh, sharing of the wisdom and it has to do with realigning ourselves to our highest self. Our Heavens team, literally, uh, from their perspective, is creating opportunities. They, they do not categorize it as testing. They do not categorize it as a negative. That's a human language perspective. Um, they categorize it as creating a positive opportunity. And so it's interesting that uh, the soul world looks at it completely different than we do. We as the being on the spiritual path must move to a place of recognition that each and every uh, person that enters our life, uh, our, our husband, our wife, our children, our co-workers, 
uh, all of those that right now on this live stream, this podcast, each and every one of us are sharing energies and we impact each other. Um, there's a co-creative consciousness that is not truly understood. And the reason why, we, we, under, we understand it intellectually. I can say co-creative consciousness and there's not one person that's watching that doesn't go, uh-huh, yeah, I know what that is. So everybody has an, an, an innate intelligence of what it means. I don't have to explain what a co-creative consciousness is. But here's the interesting thing. None of us operate in it, uh, with few exceptions. We tend to operate on an individual consciousness basis. But it is the co-creative consciousness that is screwing with us all on an individual basis. So let me state that in a different way. Because of our lack of true grasp of the collective consciousness, which has a much bigger sway on our individual stuff, we consciously, constantly find ourselves getting whacked over the head. Now, granted, our stuff is individual. Granted, our stuff is brought to us. We do have our own individual opportunities. But the ability to react to them in a positive way is negatively impacted by the larger whole. How is that possible? Have you turned on the news lately? Have you listened to or, or read anything on the news lately? How hard is it to find anything positive? Like 5% of what is shared is positive and the other 95% is negative. Now the exceptions to that are social media. You'll find quite a bit more positive on social media because it's not so uh, controlled by those with a negative agenda. <laughs> but the entire human race is one big collective whole. We are, are and have never been separate. And so in regards to our own individual spiritual testing, it is individual. No question about it. But the way we bring ourselves to answer it, the way we bring ourselves to uh, be present and uh, be present to the opportunity with awareness is negatively impacted by the collective whole negativity, if you will. And so this is why the information came out a little while ago about how we need to be responsible about uh, how we communicate with others, how we re react to others, because it is in our reaction. Is it a positive or negative reaction? Is it an ego-based reaction? Because our reaction literally can cascade a pool of negativity that goes way past that negative reaction to that one person. It could impact them, which impacts somebody else, which impacts somebody else, which impacts somebody else. It could literally have a 20-person impact. That is the nature of the interconnectivity of the human being. So as a whole, as a human race, there is an overall um, uh, there are movements all over the world to bring about love and peace and harmony in their own way. And they're all doing their best and hiccuping and starting and stalling and hiccuping and starting and stalling. And one of the reasons why is because these movements do not control the, the way information is shared. The mass media controls the way information is shared. And so there is um, those that, that wish to control the money and the food and everything else out there have a negative agenda. That shouldn't be new information for anybody. But we as individuals have to take our soul, our journey, our, uh, our opportunities and recognize that those things impact us. If you have a television, what are you watching? Are you watching things that are unpleasant? Uh, if you read the news, how often do you read the negative stuff? If you are involved in heavy duty political stuff, Trump this, Trump that, both positive and negative. Um, in many cases, those stories do not carry with them anything that is of great value to the collective whole. <clears throat> It is getting caught up on an emotional level on any one thing, I hate this, that creates more of that negative energy. Doesn't matter what it is. 
Uh, this is very deep wisdom, actually. It's not Paul wisdom. This is wisdom that runs through some of the top teachings that are out there, regardless of the, of the, uh, of the source. What I'm, I'm moving into now is very high-level wisdom. And the wisdom is, when we take sides, when we say, I'm right, that's wrong, when we uh, write a letter to the editor, <coughs> voice our opinion very staunchly in the opposite direction, it's not that that's not uh, a value on, on the conscious levels, but in terms of the energetic levels, what it's doing is it's creating a battle. It's creating a light, dark, uh, human level battle. If, on the other hand, that same person, instead of writing a staunch letter, sat down and sent love to all of those souls that were saying something opposite of what they wanted, Okay, as we want, some people want Trump, some people don't want Trump. I'll use this as an example. If you were one of those that wanted Trump, then you send love messages, uh, energy of love to all those that are against it. If you are against Trump, you send love messages to all those that are for Trump. The difference is the objectional reaction versus a love response. The objectional reaction creates more of the same. It keeps us in a place of separation. Yin and Yang does not become one until that line in the middle is removed. And that line in the middle is dramatically impacted each time we staunchly, you know, I am for this, I am against that, I am for this, I am against that. It's not that it doesn't make sense on a conscious level. It's that we need to do it differently. We need to say, I believe in this particular direction, but I'm going to approach it with love. This comes down to the simplest individual stuff. When that individual, that one person across from us, pushes our button, that is a form of a spiritual testing. That button pushing is an ego button pushing. That is your ego that is in reaction. That is your self-righteousness that is in reaction. That is a spiritual test. And in there is that opportunity. Is it better to be right or is it better to be love? You can honor that person's perspective with love. You can honor wherever they're at and however they come to you with love. But a reaction, on the other hand, may not be the best scenario because a reaction produces more negativity in that pond. So what is a staunch letter uh, or a staunch post on Facebook <coughs> that counteracts someone else's opinion? It is a ripple that, that's, that, that in essence, keeps both ripples going and you have a big wave of activity where you have a big lake and there's constant turbulence. It's not a calm, relaxed lake of love. It's a turbulent lake. So when we react to an individual or we react to a posting, it's not that indifferent. Very high level teachings, I understand it's not easy to do. I have to stop myself often because I have emotional reactions as well to certain things that, that just, you know, drives me nuts when I see the, the, the dark forces and the the uh, manipulations of the human race. I see it everywhere and I want to, you know, react. But I understand these teachings and so I just, uh, I apologize for any time in any lifetime that I have created those kinds of negative conditions upon others, um, tried to, you know, hold them down, suppress them, whatever it may be. <clears throat> and I send love to the situation. We have to do this both individually and on a collective basis because collectively, this is how we move the ball forward. We are one collective whether we like it or not. You know, there are so many people that are watching today. They came because they're stuck in their little uh, uh, pain bubble. And you know, oh, this is, this is the perfect subject for me today. I'm stuck in my pain bubble. We can remove ourselves from our pain bubble when we start to see the bigger picture. When we start making choices that do not allow that negative influence to enter our world separate ourselves from those things that cause us to be in a constant place of negativity. And I, I'm re not referring to individuals as much as I am <laughs> the sources of information that come to us. Do your best to surround yourself with sources of information that are positive and loving. That's a conscious step that you can make. <clears throat> the next conscious step is on an individual basis to not go into a reaction, move into a place like Master Marilyn taught, thank you. 
You know, somebody says something very unpleasant to you in your head. Thank you. This is an opportunity here. It might take me a little while to grasp it. I can feel my ego rising up. I can feel my need to defend myself, blah, 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 blah. But is throwing the rock back going to create the best benefit? From a spiritual perspective, individually, obviously, no. And from the bigger collective, obviously, no. We must uh, be the change that we want to see. We must be the um, representation of love and peace and harmony in the physical world we operate in. The, the chanting of love, peace and harmony, the collective chanting of love, peace and harmony, that is exceedingly valuable, more than you can possibly imagine. Because of what's it doing? It's not putting out a reverse ripple, it's putting out a calming frequency, one that loves everything unconditionally, offers peace unconditionally. It doesn't judge. There's no judgment, there's no criticism, there's nothing in there that counters and creates a counter ripple. It's simply a frequencies of balance and what is our original nature. And so the more we collectively do something like that, do our part, then what happens is the, the uh, negative agenda that impacts us without our even being aware of it, those, those subtle things that cause people to react to us because maybe you don't watch the news, but other people do. Maybe you don't pick up the newspaper, but other people do. Maybe, um, maybe you're not politically associated, but other people are. And they're very fired up and they get very charged and they bring that charge <clears throat> into your environment without you even knowing it. And they might just say something negative and you have no intention of even hearing it, but it crosses your path. They're putting out negative ripples because there is a negative agenda before it ever got to them. Our part is to say, thank you. This is an opportunity for me to send out ripples of love. This is an opportunity for me to not get involved and create more uh, rustling on that lake to make a much more calm lake for myself and for humanity. <coughs> you've heard it said and you've read that Buddha says life is suffering. <coughs> life is only suffering if we agree with it. Life is not suffering if we make a conscious choice to work with it and do, uh, do the practices that we've learned. So, how do we do that? What, why, and how? The how is by uh, consciousness, and it just takes practice. It's, it's uh, something that it just has to make an internal agreement. So the trigger word is thank you. This is what you want to employ. You want to practice it in your head. How many of the, um, of the best quality sports players tell you, the basketball players, they tell you that they sit and meditate and they practice shooting that free throw 1,000 times while they're sitting and getting it in the net 1,000 times, okay? They practice that three-point line 1,000 times in their head before they go on the court. The best sports people uh, uh, tell you that that's how they do it. We want to use that wisdom. We want to practice. We know those that trigger us in our life. We know it's the, it's the people we work with. Uh, we know it's the husband, the wife, the kids. We, we know what it looks like. So why wouldn't you, for a few minutes anyway, visualize <laughs> them going off on you or them triggering you and you saying, smiling, going, thank you. When you visualize that first and then it actually happens, instead of reacting, you go into thank you. This is an opportunity for me to awaken and not create more ripples. Then we apply the next part, the how. The how is we, we do a quick forgiveness practice. Forgiveness does not have to be long and, and, and huge and fluffy and convoluted. It doesn't have to be special words. Forgiveness is awareness. <clears throat> One of the kids pushes your buttons. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to see that uh, I may have communicated with you in a way that was not loving and honoring before. Thank you. And you send them love. It could resolve it right away. 
it, it, very fast. What did that take? 30 seconds. So there's many ways in which you can shift things right away. When we say thank you, when we do a quick forgiveness, when we love, silently in our head we can just chant love, peace, and harmony while that person across from us maybe, you know, states some more unpleasant things. We can have that, that inner smile, we can send love, peace, and harmony, love, and we can walk away. If you find yourself getting irritated, da 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 da, -da this is just ego. That's another opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for showing me that my ego has a need to be right here. <laughs> I need to step away so that I can find a way in which both of our perspectives can be honored and appreciated and I don't bring more negativity to the table. Everything is opportunity, but we have to catch it. So the how starts with awareness. The how starts with awareness. And we can use the trigger word of thank you to trigger the awareness. Once we trigger the awareness, we apply gratitude. Uh, we apply forgiveness. We apply love, peace, harmony. And if, if none of those work, you step away. Just don't trigger more negativity. <clears throat> Each time you do it, it will get easier. It, it does. You just have to put it into practice. Okay? And so, uh, let's apply this to other areas of our life where we get testing. Finances. <laughs> the bill comes. A car accident happens. Um, something unexpected sucks the last $500 out of your checking account. Okay? So, none of those are pleasant. All of those are difficult. But we have to recognize that our reaction to that could make that, uh, could make our mindsets, attitudes, beliefs, and everything that happens after that, our reaction to that could cause everything that happens after that be much more elongated, much more painful much more painful. So, how hard is it to say thank you when your last 500 gets taken out of your account, right? Not easy. But with practice, thank you. It's difficult for me to see the value in this at this moment. But I recognize that heaven wants the highest and best for me. I recognize that by reacting negatively, I'm not going to be helping myself. I'm certainly not going to be creating a positive future for tomorrow and the next day. If I react negatively, I could be unpleasant to another person who could be unpleasant to a second and third and fourth person. That's going to create more negative karma for me. So I'm clear that reacting negatively is not a good response here. So I'm going to say thank you and I'm going to ask forgiveness for bringing any form of suffering upon any souls, uh, in finances especially. Then I'm going to chant love, peace, and harmony until I feel a little bit better about it. And I'm going to reposition my thinking to where I can return that money. Now, it might take a little practice, but it's a whole lot better than going down that negative road. And you've affected the entire collective consciousness because of your wise choice. You apply this same thing. It doesn't matter if it's a relationship, it doesn't matter if it's finances, it doesn't matter how you get tested. It doesn't matter what your world revolves around and, and how it's catching you up in this moment. Each and every moment, if you're, if you're a spiritual being, you're on this path. You, you signed up for it, sorry, you're here, okay? <clears throat> we look at those around us that have that cushy little job and they have that cushy little car and that cushy little house, okay? And you think that, you know, they've got it all. I tell you guys, those people are not truly happy. They're fake happy, okay? They're, they're the ones that end up in divorce. They're the ones, and this is not for us to be, to be um, happy about, but they're the ones that are not living in a reality. They're the ones that if the world takes a dump and the financial crisis occurs tomorrow, uh, if anything weird happens in the world, those are the first ones to freak out. Those are the first ones that are unprepared it is the spiritual warrior, the one that shows the hard path, you and me. It is those of us that fight this battle today with love. It's those of us that, that see everything with gratitude that will be the leaders of tomorrow. We are the ones that those that are living in the cushy conditions now will be coming to and asking for our wisdom. How do you do that? 
because we will have already went through all of that very hard testing. So know clearly that you chose this path for a reason, to be the leader in the future. But you can't be that leader until you pass your tests. You get it? So this is the nature of the spiritual journey. Buddha didn't get to be a Buddha by, by not going through massive, massive testing. He had to leave the, the comforts of, of being literally the prince in a kingdom. Anything he wanted was available to them. Go out and suffer and then go through the process of realizing that he didn't really have to suffer. He just needed to connect and be in a place of love. But he went through all of that before he got to where he was at. Same thing for Jesus. Everybody goes through it on their way of awakening. <laughs> So now let us do some practice and get some blessings, okay? I have treasures for passing spiritual testing. I'm going to turn them on. I'm going to have them serve you. Choose one area in your life where you believe you're being tested. <clears throat> I will also uh, uh, invoke the, the blessings to change our mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs. I have received treasures for those. I will turn those on to change our mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs to, uh, to positive ones, okay? There is, for those that are interested in Master Shah's book called um, The Healing and Transmission System, The Divine Healing and Transmission System, um, the subject matter I spoke on yesterday, it's a green book, The Healing and Transmission System. There are transmissions in there for removing negativity. My God, who wouldn't want that, right? Very powerful. All right. So, connect at this time. Repeat after me. Dear the Divine, the Tao, the Source, all beings of light, I love you, honor you, respect you. My name is, state your name, Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher. I would be deeply honored, grateful, and appreciative for your blessings today to help me to pass my spiritual testing. Please bless me to release negative patterns negative reactions please bless me to release ego please bless me to align my soul heart mind and body to be a better steward of my soul journey please bless me to respond with thank you respond with gratitude thank you thank you thank you Dear the soul of the transmissions that Master Paul will share with us, I love you. Please bless me to release negative mindsets, negative attitudes, negative beliefs, and pass my spiritual testing. I'm very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we will chant divine love because it carries a frequency. What I want you to visualize is mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs locked in your, your thinking, locked in your heart center, releasing. Okay? and see gratitude entering. Close your eyes. All my downloads, all my treasures for uh, removing negative attitudes, negative beliefs, ego and attachments <coughs> transmitted to my soul. Please turn on. Please subdivide. Go to all the souls watching, all the souls listening. Offer your blessings as appropriate to assist these souls in releasing their mindsets, attitudes and beliefs that inhibit them from moving more and more into positivity. Dear my downloads treasures for passing spiritual testing, please turn on. Please bless all those souls watching and listening to pass their spiritual testing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, let us chant divine love with our eyes closed. Let us do forgiveness practice first. Continue to repeat. Dear all souls in all lifetimes, if I or my ancestors have brought suffering to you, caused you to be negative, have negative mindsets, negative attitudes, negative beliefs. <clears throat> if we have caused you to lose your faith in yourself, caused you to not be aware, conscious, and positive, I sincerely apologize. I deeply, humbly, and sincerely, sincerely apologize. I have learned my lesson. I wish to be a positive person. I wish to serve humanity. I wish to release ego and to 
move into awareness. I am very grateful for the opportunity to receive your forgiveness. Thank you. Let us chant. Divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love. Divine love. Send your divine love to all the souls you've had ego reaction to. Divine love. Divine love. Divine love. Divine love. Divine love. Divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love. Send your greatest love <clears throat> to all those souls you have created negative ripples with. Each time you might have reacted negatively, instead of with love, you created ripple effects. Ask for forgiveness. Let's send them love. Divine love. Divine love. Divine love. Divine love. Divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine light. See light radiating from your heart to humanity. Ask forgiveness for bringing layers of negativity because of your reaction because of what others have brought into your field. Divine light, <coughs> divine light, divine light, divine light, divine light, divine light, divine light. Divine light, divine light, divine light, divine light, divine light. <coughs> forgive yourself, dear my soul. Please forgive me for my negative reactions my defensiveness. Please forgive me for not responding or reacting and love. Divine forgiveness. Divine forgiveness. Divine forgiveness. Divine forgiveness. Divine forgiveness. Divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness, divine forgiveness. Dear all souls, please forgive me for not being compassionate when you came into my field with negativity. Please forgive me for not responding or reacting with greater compassion. Divine compassion, 
Divine compassion, divine compassion, divine compassion, divine compassion, divine compassion, divine compassion, divine compassion. Divine compassion, 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 divine compassion. <clears throat> Silently visualize your body, your brain, your heart being filled with light, with love, forgiveness, and compassion. See yourself, this is important, see yourself saying thank you when a coworker speaks negatively to you or about you. See your first response, thank you. If it's a boss, they say something, thank you. If it's one of your children and they react unpleasantly, thank you. If it's your spouse, your lover, they say something a negative, thank you. You see something on Facebook, it's negative. You want to react, you want to be involved, thank you. You see the news, they remind you to turn it off instead of getting involved, <coughs> thank you. Thank you is always the response. Move into love. Move into forgiveness. Send the spouse love. Thank you. Send them love silently. Let them express. It's okay. You just be in a place of love. If your ego reacts, you need to leave the room because you're in a place that is not love. You're in a place of defense. It doesn't mean you are wrong. You move into wrong when you defend. You are still okay if you do not move into wrong. Just be in a place of love. Same thing with the children, same thing with the boss. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. Treasures, please return. Okay. So how was that for you guys? Did you have any aha moments? Did you feel or see anything during the practice? And do you feel this is something you can incorporate in your life? I hope so. We've had Atina Red join us. Welcome Shirley Hicks. Welcome Maddie Teguelo. Welcome Janine. Welcome Elizabeth. Welcome Renee Martinez. Welcome Nicole. Welcome Jane. And anybody else, please forgive me if I haven't mentioned your names. So Vanessa, welcome Vanessa. She says she feels lighter, thank you. Yeah, it's important to, to recognize that we are spiritual warriors. You're here, you're watching, that means you have an agenda. And that agenda is to align more clearly to your spiritual journey. That means waking up. And waking up doesn't always mean it's easy, but we have the tools. The tools are available to us. There is uh, many, many practices. There's many wisdom and teachings. Everything you've heard me say is from my teacher, Master Shah. This is not anything that I invented. This is tried and true, just like one plus one equals two. Uh, when you do the practices, you get the results. That's why I share this teacher's wisdom, because he is uh, he's here to serve humanity. He's here to give us the path to enlightenment. And he does it in a very common sense way. So I give my deepest gratitude to Master Shah. <clears throat> so let's see, I see some comments popping in here. Linda Smith says, peaceful and lighter. Mary Tedisco says, first time here. That was wonderful. She was drawn here for a reason. You're very welcome, Mary. Please hit the subscribe button. You'll know when I go live again. And... Um, 
You can learn more about these wisdom and teachings at my website, asoulhealer.com. And uh, let's see, Renee, lots of happy faces. Kristen says, divine blessings for you, Master Paul. Thank you for the practices and blessings. Uh, she was ready for that. Good. Okay. And hot and relaxed says Robin. Brigitte says, I feel so much more peaceful. Janine Wolf, divine energy. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome, guys. Again, I'm just a delivery of the, of the information. Uh, not looking for kudos so much as application. It's important that you put it into practice. Make an agreement to respond with thank you. Make an agreement to uh, not react. Because each time you move from reaction to, to uh, consciousness, your whole future changes. There's not one part of your future that can't change when you do this. Because we are manifestors. Part of the wisdom that came through earlier is that uh, time is speeding up. And we're moving into a, a higher density. And that frequency carries with it <laughs> instant creation, if you will. It's going to be 100 years before that actually occurs. Right now, we are in a place where we don't see that our thoughts create the ripples which creates our reality. We're moving into that. And so we need to be far more respectful of our future. We need to be far more respectful of our soul and its journey. And we do that by becoming aware. We do that by applying this wisdom uh, wherever possible. So uh, Angie says, I will be sharing this and adapting it to my life more and more as I can and important awareness. Um, she can help others by expressing this wisdom and sharing this recording. Yeah, this is one of those that you can share. Some of them go a little deep, could push a few people's buttons. That's okay. They might get their buttons pushed, but they'll wake up eventually. Uh, Giotta says she'll rewatch. Ali says she feels better letting the ego aside and knowing whatever it happens is something to be grateful for and walking into the light. Great. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for your presence. I look forward to serving you moving forward. I do want to make one offer available to anyone that's interested. I am uh, able to offer a crown chakra blessing. You have two choices or you can get both of them. One is for passing spiritual testing. Okay? It's a crown chakra blessing for passing spiritual testing. In essence, it's a massive stress remover. The other one is for releasing negative mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs that keep you in a place from being grateful. Okay? So one or the other or both, whatever you are interested in, crown chakra blessings are only 100. They're very reasonable and they can be offered obviously remotely without any uh, uh, limitation. So I look forward to serving you. Let me know if that's something that you're interested in. I love you, love you, love you. You can contact me through Facebook Messenger or you can call me. Uh, thank you, Kristen, for posting my phone number. <coughs> and um, I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Bye-bye, everybody. Love you, love you, love you.